Tennessee Homestead, how the heck are you? Uh, this little barn chat's going to be about an assortment of things. I uh, got in a trade magazine here uh, of late and did some studying and went out and did a little bit of research, not much on some of the things that they were covering, just to kind of see, you know, what they were talking about. Uh, anyway, it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, going to cover a lot of different topics, so pay attention. Be right back with you. It's not too long, but we're going to cover a lot of information. Uh, one of the things that uh, I had been looking into uh, was looking at soil health, which I'm going to be part of the series coming up. And one of the interesting things that I had ran across some research was how big of a part electrodes or electrons uh, in the soil, uh, you know, mattered for your microbial life and, and fields and this may be something that if you've gotten into some row crop uh, that is dead with uh, for microbial life uh, maybe a, a, an option that could shorten the time frame it takes to turn that land around. Uh, the stuff is called biochar and what that does is it helps conduct this electricity basically in the soil. These electrons moves them around. They found out that microbes, good microbial life, is attracted to these things a lot. Okay, matter of fact, probably the big draw to microbes coming into an area. And what they have found is, is even in soil that they didn't really contaminate, but they, they screwed up the fertilization of the soil to where microbial life would not do well there. Okay, and uh, by increasing the uh, elect electrons in the soil, it still drew a lot of microbial life to that area. Yeah, and there's a product out on the market, they call it biochar, that you can mix into your soil that improves the conductivity of the soil. Kind of interesting. And it may be something that could be utilized to, uh, you know, start growing. It wouldn't happen immediately because initially the soil would kill the microbes when they came to it. But, uh, you know, as you begin to improve the soil, mixing in some biochar might help draw microbial life to that area. Might be something to look at. Okay, uh, another thing uh, before I move on to this other nonsense is uh, a couple of things I, I learned out there and it was like, wow. Uh, red clover. Uh, I really didn't talk much about red clover. And I just saw some research that had been done on red clover. There is a bacteria that gets in the, in the rumens of, of goats, sheep, cattle, so forth. And that particular microbe uh, is a protein eater. Okay. It literally steals protein from the animal uh, as it's it, doing its digesting. As the stuff is converted and so forth, it, it robs this protein. What they found was in, if you had a, a good concentration of red clover, that there was a, what did they call this stuff? Um, yibbity, yibbity, yibbity. Let me put on my specs here. Uh, let's see, yeah, biochan A, biochanin A, is a chemical that's in red clover. And it naturally uh, kills this bacteria. So therefore, and I'd known this and had been told this by old timers that red clover in a pasture was a must. It helped your cattle put on weight faster. Uh, I never checked into any of the research behind it. Well, apparently it's because this chemical gets into the animal, kills this protein stealing bacteria, and therefore the, the animal puts on more weight faster. Okay. Amazing, isn't it? Mother nature uh, just kind of has the ability to circumvent what has been currently being used to put weight on animals was a growth hormone with an antibiotic. 
red clover can do the same thing. Isn't that fascinating? Uh, one little thing that came out that I was fascinated with was uh, one of the big problems, you know, and I, in previous talk, talking about how the uh, grass-fed beef that you buy in a store, a lot of it, is identical to the feedlot beef, okay? And, uh, <laughs> and here's the reason why. Uh, it appears that uh, the U.S. does, <laughs> in all their infinite wisdom, uh, allows feedlots to feed their cattle pelletized, yeah, I said pelletized grass, okay? Yeah. Um, probably GMO uh, in nature because, of course, GMO, you can make sure you don't have any weeds out there in that field you're growing for feed. And, uh, uh, and clay, of course, to hold the pellets together and things of this nature. So that's the big reason why there's no difference between a lot of the grass-fed beef and standard feedlot uh, beef. Their numbers as far as, you know, fatty acids and so forth, and they're identical, you know. Uh, and it's like, wow, okay, so the USDA thinks that if you're pouring pelletized grass feed in front of cattle in a feedlot where they're still standing in manure knee deep and being shot in the butt with antibiotics to keep them alive because of the filth they're, they're living in, uh, that's the same as pasture-raised animals? Really? I don't even think the people at the USDA could be that totally stupid. It's got to have something to do with money. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, what they're saying. And now they're pushing hard for labeling of now, <laughs> because a lot of the consumers that are buying grass-fed beefs are doing it because they're they're more humanely raised. Okay, the the animal at least has a life. You know, it's out there with its, you know, other cattle roaming pastures, doing what cattle do. Uh, but it turns out that no, some of the grass-fed beef in your stores uh, are coming off of feedlots. They're just giving them a different kind of feed and calling it grass-fed. <laughs> Still shooting them in the butt with antibiotics, but hey, yeah. yeah it's a, kind of a no-brainer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Whew. Man, I'll tell you what, if there's a buck to be made, they don't much care how they make it, you know? It, it's amazing. Um, anyway, let's get on to the, some of this research that I think the folks are going to find absolutely fascinating. Uh, one of the things that I found really, really, really interesting is the USDA had plans to start testing food plants, stuff you eat, for glyphosate and to start looking at uh, what the levels are because, you know, they, the FDA put it at, you know, like one part per million kind of thing. And they are looking at going, now. it seems to be a lot higher than that. It's time we take a look at this. And so they had set up for start testing the stuff. And then they scrapped the idea. I wonder what that cost Monsanto and their ilk. Scrapped. They're not going to test for it. USDA is not going to test to see how much glyphosate is in your food. I don't think they really want to know because they'd have some really bad questions to answer, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, isn't that great? If you look back at the Common Sense versus GMO series, uh, I was talking in there that the, the magazine had came out with an article from a lawyer uh, who was representing some of these biotech companies and uh, seed companies in a lawsuit that was filed that drug on for four years. Okay, well, the good news is they lost. They lost. Uh, and the lawsuit was really against the EPA because basically the lawsuit said that the EPA systematically violated the Endangered Species Act when it approved these uh, herb insecticides uh, known as, uh, well, the abbreviated term for them is neonics. It's about that long and I can't pronounce it. Uh, but uh, yeah, they lost. And now the EPA is going to have to look at these things. I remembered the article, went back and pulled it up, 
and this guy was saying that if the EPA has to evaluate this, it's going to virtually kill the seed coating industry. What do they know that we don't? Huh? I do know this, that they're lying because they tell everybody, well, what doesn't get sucked up by the plant washes away in the water and just disappears. Just It, it degrades the insecticide, something fierce in water. Sounds good, kind of like Roundup, just goes away. Just goes away, you know? Yeah, we found out that was so much BS, right? Well, guess what they're doing up there? They're studying uh, water <laughs> and uh, taking a look at how much of this stuff is turning up in water. Rivers, streams, lakes, ponds. This seed coating, insecticide. Guess what, folks? They're finding a lot of it. All right. Now, the biotech companies are, oh, no, it just dissolves in water and goes away. Yeah. It kills fish. <laughs> what gets soaked up into the plant and what triggered the lawsuit was it gets soaked up into the plant when that plant flowers and the pollinators happen to come across those plants with all those flowers. The pollen, which is by design, kills them. Yeah. Where did our bees go? Gee, I wonder. Yeah, yeah. GMO plants and their pollen with these insecticides that are sprayed on the seed when they're plant before they're planted is killing off the bees and other pollinators and along with the insecticides that they plant to target. But back to the big lie. It dissolves in water, it just goes away, degrades it. No threat. Right. Yeah, the research has shown that indeed it isn't getting degraded in water. It seems to do okay, kind of like Roundup. It sinks, but it comes back. <laughs> this stuff gets in water and just kind of hangs in there, kills fish. Okay. And they said, well, it's safe for humans. No, no harmful effects for humans. Well, the research didn't quite agree with that either. Uh, I mean, one of the big killers of mankind right now is stress, you know. But, um, they say that it causes all sorts of health issues that eventually can become fatal. Uh, this stuff kind of is, uh, what can I say? It attaches to your receptors in your brain if it gets in you. In fact, the way it's in your food. <laughs> Could be one way it's getting in you. It attaches to the receptors in your brain. Now, I haven't done much research. I mean, to give you some idea on, on this, I just saw the article, read it, did about an hour's worth of looking, and basically what I could find out as far as human reactions to this insecticide is it attaches to receptors in your brain and closes them off. And he said it's primarily receptors uh, that your brain uses to deal with stress. Yeah, so once those get closed off, uh, your stress levels go up. Now, the really good news is, once it attaches to that receptor, it never leaves. Ever. So, eat some more of it, and then you have new insecticide attaching to another receptor. I wonder how long you have to eat on this stuff uh, till uh, you can no longer deal with stress. <laughs> But here was the one thing that just tickled the heck out of me. Well, it didn't tickle me. It kind of went, oh, God, these guys can't tell the truth if you held a gun to their heads. Okay, they can't. <clears throat> as far as this insecticide goes, they, oh, it, it degrades in water and just goes away. Yeah. Well, that's being proven doesn't work. But here's the real scary part. They started test. I guess this uh, research was done up in Iowa. They were testing tap water. Yeah, the stuff people are drinking. Okay. Yeah. Out of all the test samples pulled from tap water all over Iowa, it was found in 100% of the samples. 100% of the samples tested positive for this insecticide. It's used all over the country. And they're just now beginning to scratch the surface. <laughs> it will get kind of interesting now that 
by court order, the EPA has to step up and take a hard look at this stuff. The FDA should be taking a look at stuff like the glyphosate, the levels of glyphosate in our food. Um, because safe for humans, one part per million, but we've already seen the research done by others. It says, uh, nah, you know, parts per million in, the, in, in food is through the roof. And that's going in you. They've already shown that it doesn't pass through you, like Monsanto said. Oh, it just passes right out your urinary tract. It has no way to get in your cellular structure. That's been proven to be a big pile of horse buck, too. So, <clears throat> at what point does glyphosate drop you like a, a bad habit? No research has went that far yet. Uh, as far as these little, uh, uh, these neonic uh, insecticides, uh, they know it's fatal to pollinators. They know it's fatal to fish. They've tested on mice. You know what? Now, they said safe for mammals. That's what Monsanto and these guys say. Safe on mammals. Isn't a mouse a mammal? Last check. They were mammals. Yeah. Dropped them like a rock, too. I think they might be lying to you. That's one you need to write your legislators and so forth and say, we need to find out what this stuff really does to human beings. The FDA needs to take a hard look at it. And by the way, they really need to take a look at how much glyphosate is in our food. Not drop and go, oh, never mind. I'm not even going to look. <laughs> we don't want to know. I wonder what that cost them. You know, I bet biotech really had to shell out a truckload of money on that one. What do you think? <laughs> Comments below would be kind of interesting. But that is in one trade magazine, folks. In one trade magazine. The, the only good news I saw out of the whole thing is the fact that uh, the biotech companies and, and seed uh, coating companies and the EPA lost the lawsuit. They're, they're now saying that the EPA violated its own laws by not testing this stuff. I had said back then with the GMO stuff and uh, some of the updates that the seed coatings, nobody's looking at them. And we don't know really what's all going in them. Okay, because they're coming up with new stuff, but in seed coatings, and since they're covered under these old insecticide regulations, they don't even have to submit it for testing. Yeah. And they've been doing this for years, and now we're seeing the results. The stuff doesn't go away, it's showing up in the water, even showing up in tap water. Nobody really knows what it does to humans. No in-depth research has been done yet. And you know you wouldn't want Monsanto and that group to be doing their testing because they're going to come back and go, yeah, not a problem. Uh, I know that they said that it was safe for mammals and they've tested it on mice and uh, mice die from it. So I have real questions whether it's totally safe on mammals and I hate to break your heart, folks, but we're mammals, okay? So kind of makes you go, hmm. Something to think about, something to start looking into, something to start raising king with your politicians about. This food is poison. They are not only poisoning the land and poisoning the plants and poisoning the, the, you know, the wildlife around it, the pollinators, the insects. They're poisoning us. It's about time you start standing up and say, that's enough. Why you still can stand up, okay? Because time's coming. You're being poisoned from more different directions than you possibly know. But causes of stress? <laughs> I've heard a lot of medical people talking about how stress is killing us off. Now we get some uh, better ideas of where that stress might be coming from. Huh? As Richard Tennessee Home said, I hate bringing you all this good news, but it is kind of good news that the EPA did get slapped down by a federal judge, and hopefully going to force somebody to start looking at it and uh, you know when they start having a review process watch your uh, notifications on it and get involved you want to know the truth about this stuff because this stuff is in drinking water okay i know they only tested in iowa but i can almost guarantee you just about any state that has heavy gmo agriculture going on in it their water is probably going to test the same way because this stuff is alive and well and in your water on that bright note, y'all have a great day. I love and appreciate you. Uh, 
and I'm just trying to keep you informed a little bit here. Uh, not much of a barn chat, all right? But uh, I thought I'd throw that information out. Red clover, add that to your pasture mix, folks, if you don't have a bunch of red clover out there in your pastures because it's really good for your cattle. Puts weight on them and so forth. Um, and does it naturally. You don't need to shoot them in the butt with uh, growth hormones and antibiotics, we think. <laughs> seems like Mother Nature seems to know how to do this, right? I just wished uh, Big Ag would learn how to do it right before they kill us all off. Folks, have a great day. Hope you're going to have a wonderful week and have a great weekend. Let's talk to you later.